So in the first lecture, we uh, almost finished with the uh, Euler angles. All right. Now, I need to do one more thing there. Uh, so we talked about we talked about uh, three different kind of a uh, Euler angles. The first one is, if you remember this, which what it's a z, x, z, and the second one is uh, it's z y z. I didn't really go over that one, but uh, you can take a look at that. Okay. And the last one is the rho pitch yo is x y z. Okay. Yeah. So let me just uh, kind of quickly go over the x y z again. Because I uh, want to emphasize the way to find the inverse, okay, uh, to find basically Euler angles. Okay, so here is x, y, z. This is the result of x, y, z here. Okay, so this is the result of x of x y z. So you can see uh, uh, the the way you you do the multiplication is uh, you have this uh, pre multiplication in here because every step of this operation is about the fixed frame, right? So basically, this is uh, Essentially, like a yo peach yo, okay, yeah. So that's why you have this basic pre multiplications here, right? And then you get the results like this. Okay, okay so uh, let's just quickly go over here. Let's just suppose that now, you, now you have if given a rotation matrix R, okay, given R. So how do we find this phi? theta okay, and a sign. You have the matrix and you need to find the three angles. So you know all the each one of the elements out of here, right? How do we find each one of the find how to find the Euler angles? Your peach row. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, in the previous lecture, right, we used a function called tan inverse, but I think I mentioned uh, a function in the future, instead of using the tan inverse, you use the a tan two. Okay? Yeah. So let's say, for example, if I'm going to find the phi angle, right? So I guess I can make use of is I can make use of what I can make use of uh, r. You make use of this and make use of this, right? Yeah. So you see, because this quantity over this quantity is a tangential phi. Uh, but we're not we're not gonna use tan inverse, but we're gonna use a tan two. So a tan two basically the function is you have the y component, you have the x component put in here, right? So so they get the inverse. So in this particular case, my y component uh, gotta be the r two one here, right? Gotta be the r two one, and then x component is r one one, okay? Yeah. So this way, okay, you know exactly where the location basically is. Okay. So when you cancel this out, uh, for cosine theta, so you see, uh, theta, uh, theta value. Actually, sometimes this is might not be the best way to do it. But anyway. Okay, so let's think, think of the theta value here. Okay, let's see how do we find the theta value here? So theta value, what I can do is I'm still going to use a tan two function. Uh, there's a theta here, right? R three one. There's a theta over here. R three one. What's oh this is R three one. Okay. And there's cosine theta, cosine theta here, right? So 
if I use a ten two, I need a cosine theta. Then where where can I get the cosine theta? I actually can get the cosine theta from where? From yeah, the root the root of square of this plus the square of this, right? Yeah. So basically the x component is the root of r32 square plus r33 square. And then you have this uh, r31 here. But r31 has a naturally, there's a negative sign in it here, right? Negative sign. So if we want r2, uh, if we want a tan 2 as this cosine theta over sine theta, we can put a negative here to cancel that negative over here, all right? The last one is the psi angle, and psi angle can make you can be calculated making use of these two components. Okay, yeah, so a tan two, then r thirty two and r thirty three. Okay, so then you get basically uh, the tangential phi and the inverse of that give you the psi angle. Okay, give you the psi angle. Yeah. Could you use arc sine to find theta? Yes, you can. Actually, you can also use arc sine to, get to find theta. But you know, often in time, here is a tricky part here. Okay. Now, when you use arc sine to find the theta, what's the positive range for theta? Sine theta is always positive when theta is between zero and pi, right? <coughs> yeah. Now think about this, this the way that I'm talking about here. So let's say if I use the phi at here, I'm comparing these two components, right? These two components. So we're canceling which one? Canceling the cosine theta out, isn't it, right? Okay. So when you cancel this out, you uh, you actually consider this is a positive number. Okay. So that doesn't contribute the negative sign. So if your cosine theta is a positive, that actually restricts the theta within the range of what? See, what's cosine theta? This is a cosine theta curve, right? Is that right? Yeah, that's cosine theta curve. So cosine theta is a positive, that restricts the theta value between which one? Between negative pi over two and pi over two, okay? So basically when you and when you're making use of a certain set of a, uh, certain set, certain set of formula to capture the inverse or capture the Euler angles based on the rotation matrix, you, one thing you need clear is what's the range that uh, you're talking about here. So for this case, when I talk about here, my theta is always between this range at here. Okay. So for these three formulas, that's the range for this theta here. You know what I'm saying, right? But if you directly use that, uh, uh, you know, arc sine thing, right? So your theta, as you're talking about, is actually theta is within is, is actually within zero and pi's range. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you can you can take a look at le lecture notes. Uh, you can actually come up with. Uh, uh, come up with a different uh, uh, different formula. For example, uh, here, right? For example, here, for this one here, r32 square plus r33 square. So r32 square plus r33 square. What do you get? The, 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 within the uh, within this square root is cosine theta square, right? Cosine theta square. But square root square root of cosine theta square. Technically speaking, you actually you could have a you could have a cosine theta or negative cosine theta. Okay, yeah. So really, that depends on basically. Uh, so this cosine theta could be positive or negative. This right could be positive or negative this. But in this set of formula, I'm taking this positive one here, right? Positive. So that's basically the, one of the reasons also that I'm saying here. You know, theta be, belongs to this range at here, right? When taking positive, okay? When you're taking positive, okay? If you take the negative, if you take the negative, what will be the range for theta now?
if you take the negative, you know, as bad as a matter of fact, uh, and then basically uh, it's from here to where to this, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's basically pi over two to where three pi over two. Is that right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So. Anyway, just be careful. Like when you when you be consistent, essentially, particularly later when we talk about inverse uh, uh, inverse kinematics, consistent with the set of formula that you take to calculate the inverse angle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, that's essentially wrap up of the Euler's angle, right? And so let's move on okay, to. Uh, the topic I listed it here, homogeneous transformation. Okay, homogeneous transformation. So up to this stage, what we have been talking about is all pure rotation, right? It's pure rotation. So in this case, what we're gonna deal with is let's say so HT, I'll call it HT here. If we have frame which is let's say a body frame or fixed this is a fixed frame here okay so this is a fixed frame and then you have another frame or let's say this is a rigid body over here okay and in order to describe the rigid body and we assign a frame to this rigid body so we can call the x1 y1 and z1 so apparently the two frames they don't coincide with each other, right? Yeah. There is a a displacement from this origin to that origin. Okay. There's a displacement here. Okay. So better drawing here. Okay. So now the question is, how do we define the relationship? Okay, between two frames like this, right? So essentially, this is actually a common problem. So the the to describe this rigid body, right? We basically need two information. One is its position, and the other is is what. This is orientation. Okay? Yeah. So position can be explained by this vector here. And orientation can be explained by the orientation of the body attached frame with respect to the fixed frame. Okay? Yeah, that's basically the two important information that uh, you will you we're gonna have to you make use of a lot in terms of describing a rigid body, right? Okay? So now let's let's think of uh, basically uh, different ways of uh, basically deriving uh, the formulas now in terms of this uh, rigid in terms of the position and orientation. Okay, yeah. Okay, so so let me uh, slightly uh, draw the uh, coordinate system again to uh, to be consistent with my lecture notes. Okay, so in the lecture notes, okay, I have this global frame as euro okay, this is the global frame here okay and then we have the body attached frame x y z okay okay body attached frame so there is a displacement between these two frames so this is displacement here. This is let's say capital O, small o. Uh, it's a vector. So I'll call it D, the displacement. So, but when you come to vector, the vector is always able to be expressed in any frames, right? So then let's basically call this is a vector in frame G, okay, in the global frame, okay? Yeah. Okay. So now. If we have a point, let's see. Okay, maybe this is the point on the uh, rigid body. Okay, or maybe just a point in the space. Okay, so if this is a capital P point in here, then 
you will be able to have a vector, right? Uh, constructed like this. And for the same point, you can also get a vector, okay? With respect to the body frame. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so the point P for this vector, and that's a vector, you can also express the vector in any frame, but let's just say this is the vector, right? Uh, expressed in the uh, global frame. And this vector is with respect to the body frame, so you can call that the vector in the uh, body frame. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, every information we need. So let's now take a look at the relationship okay, uh, between all the vectors that are here. Okay? Yeah. So let's see what do we have. Apparently this is a triangle. Uh, you can construct vector addition or subtraction, right, using this triangle in here. So, uh, what do we, how can we construct this uh, addition here? Basically, this, this, these two vectors, right, pointing the same direction, the same direction, uh, into the tail. And uh, in other words, what do we have? This PG, this vector, supposed to be equal to this vector plus this vector here, right? Okay. So, this vector plus this vector, so that's D, that's the D, G, theta vector, plus this vector. Now, you cannot just plus this vector here, right? You can't just plus this vector. Because why? Because this vector is in which frame? In the body frame, right? So when you add vector together, they have all to be in the same frame. So if I choose global frame, then which means I'm going to have to transform this in back into the uh, global frame, right? Yeah. So this is where we can make use of the rotation matrix now. And what can we do now? So we can multiply in front of this vector with the rotation matrix. You have the global frame, you have the body frame, then you're supposed to have the rotation matrix between the two frames, so we'll in, in typically we call that what? R, B, G, right? R, B, G. Very good? Yeah. Okay. So now you might doubt is, but these two frames are not coincide each other here, right? That's fine because vectors are free. I mean, you can move this frame you know, all the way back to here, right? With just sort of uh, enact and neglect this uh, displacement. You, then you have an orientation, right? Then you have the orientation. And vector is free. So even though you draw the vector here, you can always move that vector back to this location, right? By parallelly moving it without changing its length. Okay? So there we go. That's the relationship uh, between uh, these uh, three vectors that here. Okay? Yeah. Then what will be the inverse here? So let's do a quick one here. How do we calculate the inverse based on this relationship? So if I calculate the inverse, then what do I do? I have to move this one to the other side. Okay. Yeah. And then multiply by what? Multiply by the inverse of this matrix here, right? Multiply by the inverse of this matrix. And inverse of this matrix, this is a rotation matrix, so technically speaking, you just need to calculate which one. You just need to calculate the transpose, right? Transpose, okay? Yeah. So, um, RBG transpose, so in terms of our notation-wise, RBG transpose actually is the same writing as what? RGB, okay? Yeah. So RBG is orientation frame B with respect to G, then RGB, or right, the transpose, becomes the orientation of frame G with respect to frame B. Okay? Yeah. And uh, then, then you get uh, this guy here, minus RB, RGB times GG, minus there, minus out there. Okay? Okay, so those are pretty simple in here, okay? That's pretty simple. You can uh, practice an example here a little bit. Let's take a look at example, okay? Just making use of the understanding, uh, again, sort of understanding the transformation here, okay? So 
I'll bring uh, a diagram. Okay. So for this example. Okay, so let's take a look at the example here. See if you can figure it out yourself. Okay. By Okay, so for this example, so this here's what happens here. Okay, so this is the robot with one revolute joint and the one prismatic joint. Okay, it's kind of robot actually. I studied uh, in my graduate study. So um, initially, the the uh, the global frame, capital ones, coincide with the body frame. Okay, so there's a body frame attached. Out of here share the same origin initially. Okay. Then the first step, uh, what it, what happens is, okay, is it, it, it goes through a rotation about the capital Z axis of a certain degree, okay, and then there is a translation. Okay, there's a translation basically about this prismatic joint. Okay, after the rotation of a certain degree, which is 60 degree here, then there's a translation of this this much D at here, okay, along this prismatic joint. That's basically the operation here, right? Okay, so here's what we know. P1 represents the end effector point here, and we know that, okay, initially P1 is coordinate because initially body frame and the global frame assign, you know, uh, coincide with each other, so P1 in B, P1 in G, they are actually the same thing, right? Yeah. So we know this value, okay, and that kind of makes sense. Basically, you see the Y component is zero. There's only X and Z components for this coordinate, okay? This coordinate, yeah. Okay, so first step, is a rotation about the z axis of 60 degree. Step number one. Okay. So step number one. How would you write the step one here? Step one, physically, what it says is it's a translation, right? It's a translation along this prismatic joint. Okay. Along the prismatic joint. But if I wanted to explain it so using you know the um, the, um, uh, the the wording right here so it this is a translation along which axis basically right this is a translation along which axis so you see you, you got to think of this for the first step if you rotate the body frame will end up at which location now and over here, right? Okay, yeah. And then after the translation, but so the tra now the second step of translation is actually along which axis? This x-axis, right? Yeah. Okay. So um, if this this is the body frame, basically it's the rigid attached to the body, then any motion will cause this one, basically this frame, body attached frame to go along that direction, right, with this much of translation. So this is why you see your body frame end up at this location. And uh, let's see, this this distance, translation, this distance here, that D, right, equal to 720.2, okay, millimeter, okay, yeah. So this is uh, the translation. So in the next step, we'll see that, I'll use, uh, basically, uh, use a T, X basically D to represent the kind of translation. This is a translation along the the current frame, along the body frame, by how much? By a D distance. Okay? Yeah. But this is a translation along okay, body frame X. Okay? Not X here. Okay, so last step. It's the question here. What will be the sub P2? So your end your any factor now is at this location. What's the value of a P2G? 
right, in global frame. Okay, that's it. That's what you do. But all right, yeah. So it's pretty. It's not a bad. It's a pretty simple question. Okay. Essentially, it's application of uh, what we have here. Okay. So what is P2G? I mean, the robot is here. It's uh, kind of hard to tell, but you can always construct just the vectors, right? You can just uh, construct the vectors here, and then you'll be all right. So what is P2G then? If I gonna make use of uh, this formula, so this is basically this is like the P2, right? In that case, okay, yeah. Essentially, what do I need? I need this times this plus this, right? Okay. So let's see, we if we have everything in here. P2G, okay, equal to what? Equal R RBG times P2, what? In which frame? In the body frame, plus the DG, right? So you see, if I draw it slightly here, just using the frame. So what do I have here? I have the body frame over here, x, y, z. And then I have, okay, and I have the, uh, let's use red color. I have the body frame at here. What's this one here? This is what? Small x, small y, small z, right? And where's the P point? P P2 point. P2, if you want it, if you want to draw it very precise, P2 is along this axis, right? Along this line here. So P2 is somewhere on the top. P2 is somewhere here. That's a P2 point. Okay? Yeah. So then what is the P2? Basically, this vector is P2 G, right? And uh, this vector is P2 B. Okay? And then this vector drawn from this here to here is what? DG. Okay? Yeah. Hmm? DB? Well, ah, uh, yeah, very good point. Well, I, yeah, you can you, you can express a DB, but I need this as a DG, right? Yeah. But you know what? Actually, that's exactly the same the thing that uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna need that out of here. Okay? Yeah. You need that. You need that to be this. You need this to be DG. But apparently, I think your your intuition is very right. Apparently. You don't know the DG right away, but you can write down DB right away, isn't it? Right. So you see this vector from here to here. You can write this DB right away here. So tell me, what's the DB? This is the body frame here, and this vector is along this body frame x-axis. What is the vector for this db, for this vector in body frame? Do you have any y and z component? You only have an x uh, component here, right? What What is the x component for this vector? We said it. Uh, the translation from here to here is how much? This much here, right? So what's this? OK, right? Yeah, that's dg, right? That's dg. Sorry, that's DB. Okay. Yeah. 
Mm. No. Yeah. Vector is free. This is the vector here. Free means what? Yeah, move this vector to where? Move this vector so that the starting point coincide with the origin, right? So the vector basically, when you say DG, you're actually saying this is a vector here, right? Yeah, and that's your DG. Okay. Yeah. That good? Yeah. So that's your DB, but we want DG. So what would what what would be DG then? So this is the vector in body frame, but you need the vector in global frame. So we need a transformation, right? Vector transformation. So we need to multiply this by RBG. Okay. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Okay, so now the whole question here is um, what will be the RBG value now? Based on the based on the drawing of the two frame or based on the operation, the steps operation here. What's the orientation or what is the rotation matrix? The rotation there's only one rotation matrix, right? There's only one rotation here, which is about a z-axis. So basically RBG is what? The rotation about a z-axis of how much angle? 60 degree, right? Yeah. And you have the basic rotation matrix and you can just plug in and you can uh, calculate that. No? Yeah. Okay, so what about the P2B? This is the point two in body frame, right? Point, point two in body frame. Well, guess what? I mean, so th this is initial point P1, right? This is initial point P1. So P1 is a point on the rigid body. As you're moving, translating, right? As you're moving and translating, and the, bo the body attached frame is also moving at the same time. So which means the P2 point with respect to the body frame, would there be any change? No, yeah, right? So it's basically moving the same time as the body frame, right? So the, the, the any factor P2 point, the coordinate with respect to the body frame, there's no change, just like this what? P1, B. P1B. Is that good? Yeah. So P2B is the same as this P1B. Okay. Yeah. That's it, right? Now you get all the values and then you plug it in and you'll be able to you will you'll be able to calculate uh, P2G here. Okay? Yeah. So there's a lot of a very fundamental concept you're making use of at here, right? In terms of this calculation. And of course, I mean you, you can always if you're is this is not a sophisticated case and you can always look at this one here geometrically, even without learning the rotation matrix and then uh, by doing some breaking down components and then calculate the actual component, right? Actual coordinates. Okay? Yeah. No. Remember what I said? See, this is the P1 with respect to this body frame, right? Mm -hmm. Body frame moves together. Mo body frame also moving in here. I'm saying if it originates these coordinates, mm -hmm. we're located the, the on, on, on the purple line, right? Before. But now it's in front of the purple line because you have a purple line. Rotation and then X. Where's the purple line? In figure A. Oh, yes. this is blue, you mean? Hmm? No, I mean the figure A, the origin, yeah. is on the purple line. But in figure B, hmm. the origin is along the x axis. And we have a different B. Yeah. So shouldn't be A. Minus the distance from the x of p2. No, no. The all you need to think of is this. 
here's the P1, here's the body frame, right? The P1 and the body frame, they are fixed. See, this is the coordinate system, right? This is P1. Okay? They're fixed. Fixed means what? You know, I have a point on my head here. Whenever I do whatever I do, that point is not going to go anywhere. It's still going to be there. See, right? If, there, if I have a, a frame attached, you know, somewhere on my body, right? This is the observation. If, if somebody is always observing within that frame, see, that point coordinate, does that change or not? It doesn't, right? That's exactly the point here. That point and the body frame, the uh, uh, whole thing, right? They don't detach from each other in this case here, right? Yeah. So that's why you see the P2, right? Coordinate with respect to the body frame here, it doesn't change. Okay? Yeah. So ultimately, this is the way how you always describe the uh, rigid body is you always attach a body frame to a rigid body. And that frame is rigidly attached to the uh, rigid to, to the body, to the rigid body. Rigid means it does not go by itself. It goes with the rigid body, right? That's actually one of the very critical things when you when you deal with the multiple joint uh, uh, robots, right? We always assign a frame, basically at each joint, and one of the frame is the body frame. Okay, if there is a rotation or translation from a previous joint, okay, guess what? I mean, let's say if I have a translate a rotation in here, see that rigid body will move, right? Is that clear? But if there is a body attached frame at the end, suppose at here, then it will move together, right? With the body. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so uh, now let's take a look at uh, uh, sort of a composition. Okay, composition of a transformation. So composition transformation is more of like uh, uh, the composition of a rotation. So in, in this particular case, uh, you what we do is, you know, uh, in this case, I think I'll bring in my drawing here just just to save a little bit of time. Um, this does involve quite a few arrows. Okay. Okay, so there are essentially three different frames that are here. Okay, three different frames. This is the global frame. This is a maybe an intermediate body frame, and this is the let's see the the in the current body frame. Okay, yeah. And then we have a point P, okay, right here. And essentially, you can construct you know all different kind of uh, position vectors uh, with respect to, uh, to different frames, right? And there, there are also two different displacement vectors uh, for the two frame one and the frame two. Okay, for the two body frame. Okay. Okay. So understand this now, and uh, also understand that uh, the superscript, right? The superscript also always ref refer to the frame the vector is expressed in. Okay, that's a superscript. And then apparently, if I look at this one here. Um, let's say this is a P naught, right? This is a P naught in here. And if I look at this triangle, right? If I look at this triangle, then what do we get? We get R10 times P1 plus uh, this guy here. Is that good, right? Yeah. And if I look at P2, P1, Okay, if I look at the P1 here. So P1, where is P1? P1 is here, right? Then I'm going to look at this triangle here. Okay, look at this triangle. Add triangle vector addition here. So that's R21 P2 plus what? Plus this, plus this D12 in where? In 1 here. Okay, is that good? Yeah. Okay, so. Now you see, there's P1 here, P1 here, and I can basically substitute this one into this term here, right? This term. So what do we end up with? P1 
naught equal to R10 times this whole chunk, okay, times this whole chunk. So R21 times P2. Then R10 times which one? Times this quantity, right? And plus last quantity there. Okay? Yeah. So that's P naught, right? That connection and that actually connects the uh, the relationship between P naught and P two. So one step simplification. What is R one naught times R two one? That's right, right. That's the orientation between frame two, right, with, with frame two with respect to the frame zero. Okay. And what about this addition here? R1 naught D121 plus D010. Basically, D010 is this, right? Plus what? Plus this guy times R10. So this guy times R10. This guy times R10 actually give you, in terms of notation wise, you actually would be able to write what this is R12 instead of 1, you can write it in 0, right? Okay, so R120 plus R010, so R010 plus R120, you're supposed to get what? This guy here, right? You're supposed to get this. So basically, you're supposed to get. This quantity here is supposed to get D020. Okay? D020. Okay? So that's essentially the last triangle at here. Okay? The last triangle. Does that make sense? Okay? So when you have a composition of a movement, right? Uh, it's just like a, um, just like the composition of a rotation matrix. You can always put things together, huh? Put things together here. Okay, so any questions? Are good. So now let's talk about homogeneous, okay, transformation matrix. So I'll start from here. So P naught, okay, equal R two naught P two plus D zero two naught like this, okay, for this notation. So first of all, this vector, what's the dimension? This is a vector. This dimension we talking about column vector is three by one, right? Three by one. So then I'm gonna construct a new vector, okay, by adding one row. So so that this is become four by one now. Okay. If I do this, this P2, I'll do the same thing. I'll put another one at here. Now, this is also the vector, so basically, I'm going to put another one in here, right? Like this. Okay? Yeah. Well, as a matter of fact, we don't really need to put this one in here. So if we learn the, the linear algebra here, so what we can do is, I can shorten the description now, like this now. Okay? Like this. So let's verify if, if, uh, uh, if we get this right or not, right? So matrix multiplication. Uh, how do we multiply? How do we do matrix matrix multiplication at here? So we basically do what? This one times this, right? This one times this. That actually give you exactly what? This plus this, okay? And then the one, the last one. This is zero one times one. So you get basically one equal to one, right? No, nothing altered, right? Nothing uh, changed uh, with respect to this expression. But it's just now we have uh, a matrix expression. Okay? Yeah. So this guy here, okay, this is called homogeneous okay, transformation matrix. Okay. The reason is it's called homogeneous transformation matrix is because this. For this vector or this vector, 
Okay, they are four by one vector. The difference is uh, if you have this vector here, okay, this is vector. This is called the Cartesian coordinates, right? Cartesian coordinates. Then when we, okay, when we put, let's say, I'm not going to write p anymore. When we construct new vector, okay, uh, temporarily I'll use a w at here. When we construct a new vector, okay, then this vector is called, okay, homogeneous. coordinates. Okay, this is called homogeneous coordinates. Okay. Uh, often in time and actually maybe I should put let's say multiply W uh, or in front of here. Okay? Yeah, that's called homogeneous coordinates. Okay. So how do I get the Cartesian coordinates back uh, from the homogeneous coordinates? So what do you do? Basically you Use this divided by this guy here, or use this divided by this, or use this divided by this. Is that good? Right? So matrix is what? You know, basically, let's say, remember, matrix is always uh, talking about this here is, oh, y equal to a times x, right? a is a uh, matrix, and x is the vector. So when you use a matrix times a vector, you come up with a new vector. That's why they call it the matrix, which oftentimes called the transformation. Rotation matrix is also a transformation, but it's a special one, right? And here, now you have another matrix here. This is a 4 by 4 matrix, right? And uh, you're using this to transforming, not a Cartesian anymore, transforming homogeneous tra uh, coordinates. So this is why I call it homogeneous transformation matrix, all right? Yeah. Okay. So now, often in time, uh, this W here, you can you can consider W as kind of a skating factor, okay, in the homogeneous uh, coordinates, because let's say I have uh, three, two, three, two, okay, three, 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 two. If I'm going to con con uh, go back to the uh, Cartesian coordinate, I use this divided by two, this divided by two. So every one of these will be scaled back by uh, two, right? Yeah. Okay. So Ultimately, in terms of the homogeneous transformation matrix, this is the generic okay, format to write this homogeneous transformation matrix. Over here, this is a 3 by 3 okay, matrix, okay, 3 by 3 matrix, and that's in robotics uh, application, this is going to be a rotation matrix. But not necessarily going to be always a rotation if you use it as a in cameras in vision, uh, computer vision, uh, that kind of application, right? Yeah. And then you have uh, here another a three by one vector. So, so here there's a three by three matrix, right? And here's a three by one vector. Okay, three by one vector. Okay. So if I separate the matrix like this, okay. So I have two more in here, and to make it four by four, here I need a what? I need a one by three, right? Vector, okay. And then the last one here, I need a one by one elements out of here, okay. So all together that give us this homogeneous transformation matrix, right? So in computer application uh, or in robotics here, so often in time, this one here, this is rotation matrix. And this is the translation, okay? And this one in here, this is called a perspective, okay? And this one here is a scaling, okay? And in robotics, we always use a one, okay? We always use a one in here, okay? So, uh, in terms of the perspective, you can take a look at my lecture notes. I have a, a, a sort of optional notes there in terms of what does a perspective means. Okay, yeah. So there's a little transformation, basically perspective. Whether you're looking from that direction or look from that direction, right? That's, that p will function like that. Okay, yeah. Okay. So in robotics, this is always going to be one. In robotics, the perspective is always going to be right. This is going to be zero for uh, for robotic application. 
skinning is one okay for robotic okay, like this okay yeah that's homogeneous transformation and this is what you do uh, basically here so what one very important thing you, you gotta remember your this is homogeneous coordinates and your Cartesian coordinates is actually the first three row okay the first three row and uh, in the animation okay for this assignment it's okay for for the, for the future animation and uh, some of the code that you're gonna see is um, keep it as generic so basically uh, if I need the Cartesian coordinate I'm only taking the one to three rows Okay, the first, the second, the third rows. That means they're only taking the Cartesian coordinates, right? Yeah. And like the uh, uh, like the basic rotation matrix, and you also have some basic transformation matrix. Okay. Okay, basic transformation matrices, and some of the basic ones, for example, in her notation, say uh, d x of a. So this means what? This means this is the pure translation. Okay, so pure translation okay, along the x-axis. Okay, pure translation along the x-axis. So uh, you can actually now write down, you know, try to write down this. So what does that mean? If it's a pure translation, then according to the definition of homogeneous transformation, the rotation matrix, there's no rotation, right? So what you should put it here is actually what? It's uh, what you do need, you need a what? Identity matrix, right? You need an identity matrix. And it's a pure translation on the x axis. So the x coordinates is A, 0, 0, okay, like this. Okay. So similarly, you can have, you know, uh, DZ, A, or DY, A, like that. And that the other uh, the other uh, uh, basic ones like this. So there is a pure rotation. Okay, let's say I have a pure rotation. Okay, about okay x-axis of alpha angle. Now what does that mean? If I construct this T, if I construct the homogeneous transformation matrix, then the translation vector at here will be 0, 0, 0, right? And uh, when you plug it here, is basically you plug this Rx of alpha here, and 0 at here, 3 by 1, and 0, 1, like this. OK, does that make sense? OK. So ultimately, what this means is, OK, the homogeneous transformation now we're going to basically use this more generic case. If we only look at the pure translation, we can use this one, okay, to to multiply certain vector, right? Not it's not a vector, it's not a coordinate uh, position vector anymore. It's what it's the homogeneous coordinates, right? Basically, you add additional one, okay, to the original position vector, all right? Yeah. So this is basically become more generic now, right? Uh, in robotics toolbox, you can try uh, basically there's T R A N S L. This is a translation, okay? It's causing a translation uh, along translation to somewhere else, okay? And there's a trot X. This is the rotation about X axis of a certain arc. That's a pure rotation, okay? This one this is basically trot X. And then, and then if, it, if it's just a rotation, uh, in the it's called rot x, right? Like that, okay? Yeah. It, even if you program yourself, you know it's a, a pretty pretty simple, straightforward, right? Yeah. Okay. Any questions? All good. Homogeneous transformation matrix, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's take a look at another example right here now. Okay. Let's take a look at it. How do we uh, make use of homogeneous transformation matrix? All right. Yeah. Okay. So again, I'll use instead of drawing it here, I'm gonna bring in that example in here. Okay. So I'm skipping a f one example so you can take a look at yourself. 
Okay, so here is here's a box and here. Okay, here's a box. Okay. So, uh, what does the uh, what do we do with the box now? Okay, uh, there is an axis u. That's the, the vector u. Essentially, is the connecting a to g. That's the u there. Okay, that's a u. Uh, what we want is we want the cube okay, to turn 45 degree about u here. So to turn 45 degree about this guy here. Okay, so that's the first step. Then the second step after the rotation, then translate. Okay, translate. Uh, uh, translate to, I guess along the same along the same axis u yeah so yeah so and then translate okay, okay by this much dg here so Is that good? Can you visualize the the motion like this? Yeah? Yeah. So when you rotate about the U, you know, the box basically, right, it's somehow uh, tilted, right? But uh, the edge of this box is still here, right? Still here. And then the whole box will move along the U basically uh, to this, uh, by this much, right? Translation DG. Okay, yeah. And the last one question is uh, basically to find what will be the uh, coordinates, right? It's for E, F, G, H coordinates. Okay, after those two steps here. Okay. So, as a matter of fact, you can think of the easy one. What will be the coordinates for? The vertices is A after two steps. The coordinate to vertex A. One? That's not coordinate. Coordinate one. One, one, one. Exactly, right? Yeah. Okay, so um, I mean, this this one is actually not too bad, but you do need to um, probably use MATLAB to, to help you calculate, use a calculator. Because uh, you know the the rotation matrix is not integer numbers, right? Yeah. Okay. But technically speaking, right? You how along what line that you you should think of basically? Okay, along what line that you should think of uh, in terms of calculation? Uh, if 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 it's just a pure if it's just a pure rotation. Then the question if ask is, okay, what's the uh, coordinates of F after rotation? I mean, what you need to do is what? Uh, basically, you need to come up with the rotation matrix, right? You need to come up with the rotation matrix. And then you time, let's say, the vector F representing this. This is a vector F initially. And then you get F what? Final, right? Yeah. So the three application of uh, rotation matrix, which is the first one is orientation, second one is vector transformation, the last one is rotation of vectors, right? Rotation of vectors. Okay. So now, but this time. You're not just rotation, you also have orientation, and you also have a translation. So, what do we need to do now? We, instead of this formula here, this R will be replaced by the transforma homogeneous transformation matrix. Okay? And then times what? This is, this is a position vector here, right? But I guess I had to change now, right? I had to, I got to add what? This is initial. 
I got add one. Add a one in it here. Okay? Add a one. So when you use times this, that's the beauty of this homogeneous transformation. So what it does is it'll do the rotation and then translation. Okay? So when you use times this, basically it'll rotate this vector and then translate by how much? By whatever specified over here. Okay? Specified over here. What would be the dimension of that? Mm. This guy? And the F initial over one. It's three by three by one. So F initial is star two? Hmm? No. Like, oh, the whole thing's four by one. Oh. Yeah, this is four by four, right? That makes sense? Yeah, same idea though, right? You know, you use this, you get a final. So when you use times initial, initial homogeneous coordinate, homogeneous coordinate, you get basically final, right? Okay, you get this final. Okay? Yeah. That's like a one stone two birds by using this homogeneous transformation, right? It does this rotation and a translation at the same time, right? Not at the same time. To give you this quantity, okay. Yeah. So now the question is, what will be the TBG in this case at here, right? T B G. TBG. So how do you how do you come with the TBG? According to the the definition of a homogeneous transformation matrix, you should have a three by three matrix here with the rotation matrix, right? And in this particular case, what's my rotation matrix? Right, RBG or RU 45 degree, right? Yeah. So you should have this RU 45 degree at here. Okay. And here it's going to be a three by one vector, which is the translation vector, right? So in this case, what's the translation vector? Okay. Yeah. Is that clear? And then you make it up with zero to here, and then the one in here. That's your TBG. Okay, that's your TBG. If you use this TBG times F initial, so if, if let's say this is a unit cube, right? If this is a unit cube, so what is the what is F initial here? So this F initial would be what? Let's see. Uh, X is one. Y, x, x1, z is 1, y0, so f initial is 1, 0, x, x1, and then 1. Right? Are you is RBG? Yes, this is RBG here, right? Okay. This is RBG, because I only have one operation in here. Okay? Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah. So, yeah. What would happen if we were given D in the body frame? Given D in body frame. Not then, global frame. Yeah, then you have to transform the, the D back to the global frame. Okay. And then you put it over here. Right? Yeah. But just remember that D represents essentially it's the translation from the origin of the global frame, right? To the origin of the body frame. Right? That's always the D there. And we, in the, I think, lecture three or lecture two, I don't remember now, we have the formula. Remember the formula for uh, generic rotation matrix about an arbitrary axis, axis, right, of a certain angle. Okay. You know, you can basically use that formula to plug in um, the rotation matrix at here. Okay. Yeah. So um, this is what that uh, big matrix is supposed to be. Okay. This guy here. Right. Uh, in the in robotics toolbox, you can uh, there is let me see yeah in, in robotics toolbox you you do have uh, you do have a va you do have a function to deal with this is called a n g v c vector a n g vector to t r okay yeah so give Give this the theta. Give the vector. Okay, that's what happens. So this one here. Okay, this one here trans 
this one here create a homogeneous okay this one here create homogeneous transformation matrix based on the angle of rotation and vector of rotation right but you know you got to be careful though this this one what this one creates is this okay this one creates this one okay there is no rotation there is no there is no translation here though huh there is no translation but what we need to create is what is this right yeah so you're actually going to have to manually put this into here you see what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. So basically, what you need is let's see if this is a T. Okay. This is a T you created here. Okay. This T you created here, and you have the DG in MATLAB. Let's say you create a D. Let's say one, one, one like this. Okay. You created this matrix one, one, one. Okay. So then. How do I put this D over here? How do I put the D and D, uh, D over there? Uh, okay, this is a test. Uh, let's see if I remember right here. So you need to put this over here. This is basically this is the first row to the third row of which column? Of column number? Which column is this? Four. Four. So. This is the column number four. I need the first row to the third row of column number four to be the same as the D. So that should be that should do it. Okay. Yeah. Or unless you uh, try this really uh, dumb method, that you can do is oh T one. This is T one what T one four equal to what D one. T one no T two four equal to D two you know right yeah actually which is what I did in the action okay. notes okay yeah uh, your function there T equal A and G B C two T R or T B or sorry where here yeah, oh what's that function T B T R T R T R yeah so this is an angle vector to transform uh, to transformation matrix. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the last point, I think I'm gonna make. Oh, what time am I supposed to finish again? Oh, yeah, almost time to finish now. Right? Okay. So, 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 okay. So the, the the last point I'm trying to make is this. Uh, given a homogeneous transformation matrix, all right? Given homogeneous transformation matrix. So what we know is, you know, we said, okay, this must be R, B, G, uh, D, G, 0, 1, like this, right? Like this. Uh, we can actually separate this into basically two steps, like uh, what we did. You have these two frames coincide with each other. First step, you rotate first. Doesn't matter how you however you rotate it. Second step is to translate. All right, so you end up with uh, the 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 homogeneous transformation matrix, right? Yeah. So if we do that, actually you can separate this matrix into uh, two things here. This is an identity matrix, and this is that uh, uh, translation. Okay, and then. This is RBG zero 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 oh no zero one. Okay, you can separate this rotation uh, tra homogeneous transformation matrix into a multiplication of this times this. Okay, and this representing is do a rotation first, and then do a translation. Is that good? And both operation. Okay, both of these operations, they are all about what? The two steps. They are all about the fixed frame. All about the fixed frame. Okay? So this is actually essentially this is a pre-multiplication here. Okay? Yeah. Remember that uh, 
rotation matrix, right? When it's all about the fixed frame, you have what? Pre-multiplication, right? Yeah. Don't try to reverse the order, though, right? If you use this times this one here, you're actually going to get uh, totally different homogeneous transformation matrix from this one, right? Yeah. So they in they don't interchange, though, right? They don't interchange. Uh, I do have one last uh, one last example. Maybe yeah. Maybe I'll just uh, ask you at here. Okay. Maybe I'll just ask you here. Okay. So you can we don't have time, but you know you can think of this one here. Uh, this is x y z. Okay. First, I'll translate it first. So it's now it's, you see, eh? It's a little bit different. When we do this one here, this is called rotate first, then translate. Okay. Now I'm gonna introduce this kind of case here. I will. Oops. I will translate. So suppose that uh, I have a body frame. I'm going to translate the body frame to somewhere here. So this is a pure translation. Pure translation means there's no rotation between the two frames, right? Yeah. After this pure translation, okay, then we're going to do a rotation. We're going to do a rotation. So here's you need a little bit of imagination. I'm going to rotate this guy, okay? Rotate this guy about this global axis, capital X axis. You know what I'm saying? Right? Okay. So when you see rotate this about the global axis, there are actually two different kind of rotation. One is okay, so here is the vector connecting here to here, okay? Yeah. So when we do rotation, so see that vector's length is not gonna change, right? So that vector is going to rotate here. If you think of this vector, the whole vector, you don't rotate 360 degrees, you're going to be a circle, right? Yeah. So if I do rotation, let's say after alpha angle, okay, so this comes over here. The lengths, these two should be the same, right? It's the same. The frame, the frame here, there are two different situations now. One is, the frame actually no change in terms of orientation, right? And the other is the frame actually, you know, it's like a very think of a motion here. When you're moving an object from here to here, okay, and that object maybe there's no rotation, it's just here. But at the same time, maybe, right, that object could also do what? As, as, as you're moving it, the object could also do a self-rotation at the same time, isn't it, right? So let's see, this is a case one. Then the other case is maybe the object is also rotating about its own x-axis when you're moving from this state one to state Okay. Is that, is that clear? Okay. So, if I'm required to write down the homogeneous transformation matrix, you actually get two different ones. Okay. You get two different ones. So we'll look at the details in the next lecture. Okay. Yeah.